Good morning, everyone. This is Scott Sackett from Washington State Archives Records Management, and welcome to today's webinar on transferring scanned agenda packets to the digital archives. Now, you may have attended several of our other webinars having to do with other records that you can uh, transmit to the digital archives, such as minutes, ordinances, resolutions, also audio records of your governing or advisory board meetings. But we wanted to make sure everyone knew as well that agenda packets uh, are also eligible for transfer. We're very interested in having those. And there are benefits to your agency in transferring these. So we'll be talking briefly today about specifying what records can be transferred, and then the scanning and indexing requirements. It's a pretty short list uh, of, of what you need to do with those records in order to be able to, to have them ingested at the digital archives for preservation and access. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the do a walkthrough of the transfer process, um, and also get a look at what the what what access will look like after you've transferred these records. So whether it's a user in your community or whether it's someone from your office, what that uh, access to those records will look like. Now, many of you may already be familiar with the digital archives. Actually, I'd like to ask the question, how many of you have visited our digital archives website at least once before? Raise your hand, please. OK, we're looking at about half. OK. And let me lower everyone's hands there. Hold on just a moment. And how many of you have transferred records from your agency to the digital archives? So that might be minutes, ordinances, resolutions, might be audio records. Um, OK, at least one agency has. OK, great. One or two. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, we encourage all, all agencies to do it, to try even, you may even want to send a, a, a trial run, a sample set of records, just scanning whether, you're, whether we're talking about the agenda packets or your minutes or ordinances and resolutions. Even if you scanned like six months or a year's worth, um, we don't specify how much you need to send at a time. That is really up to you. So. Um, even consider the first time to do something of a, of a practice run. Uh, and we're happy to assist in, in helping you through that process. Now, the Digital Archives was created back in 2004. And it's a facility that's purpose-built, dedicated to the preservation and access for archival electronic records, both from state agencies and local government agencies. Um, many of those records are born digital. Uh, there are also a lot of records that get requested a lot, uh, have a high level of use, and perhaps have been scanned from their original paper form, if their original form was paper. Many of those records, uh, millions of those records, actually, are accessible through the Digital Archives website, which you see the address here. And there are many different searchable collections, such as those that I just mentioned. There are other ones for early birth and death records, marriage records, uh, some court case files, those sorts of things. But also behind the scenes, there are even more records, tens of millions more records, that are not currently searchable, either because they are statutorily uh, identified as confidential or because the search tools haven't been developed yet. But just know that there are other records that we can possibly help you to find. And there, uh, there's also the staff that you don't see you don't see, see their faces, of course, but we have programmers, security experts, and others that are working to keep the digital archives fun functioning and also extending its, its capabilities over time. So we've talked in other webinars about different meeting records that, that can be transferred. What we're going to be talking about specifically in this se session is scans of official agenda packets from meetings of governing or and or advisory boards. And the record series that apply here are found both in the state general schedule for state agencies and also in the local government common records retention schedule or core for local government. And you see here in these series, it's not just one type of record that we're identifying there. You see what's listed there, circled in red. It talks about agendas, meeting and agenda packets. That's what we're specifically talking about this time. But you're also familiar, perhaps, with other records that 
I've mentioned already this morning, minutes, audiovisual recordings, transcripts of proceedings, all of those fit under this, uh, this series in the state schedule. And you'll see over here at the far right, those are listed as archival permanent retention. Now what that means for your agency is either your agency is keeping those records forever or the archives is keeping those records forever. Um, and uh, th those records are never going to go away. So we encourage agencies to transfer those records to us once they've met their retention. In this case, your agency is only obligated to keep them for six years after end of calendar year. And then we encourage you to make it our responsibility to preserve those and provide access to those point forward. With advisory body records, you see it's the same sort of description. The archival designation is a little different. Archival appraisal required, and you may have run into that designation before. What that means is that the archives needs to get a look at those records to appraise them for historical value and determine whether they need to come to the archives. And we could do that with you prior to the transfer process. And here are the same, same series in the, in the core. So for local government, this is the series you use. Again, you see that there are multiple types of records listed. And all of those are eligible for transfer. The paper version can be transferred to the, uh, to the appropriate branch archives and the audio version, uh, the audiovisual recordings or scans of the uh, paper records can be transferred to, uh, to the digital archives. Now with the scanning requirements, as I mentioned, it is a short list. Um, really there's the things that we're mainly concerned about are resolution, file format, and file compression. Uh, for resolution, we ask that the scans be 300 dots per inch or pixels per inch or higher. Usually 300 is, is uh, high enough to capture sufficient detail so that it could be considered a complete record, visually speaking. Part of this, though, also another factor you need to consider is the file format. Uh, we ask that these be uh, saved as multi-page TIFFs. That uh, stands for tagged image file format. And by multi-page TIFF, we're not saying, okay, the entire month or the entire year worth of records be one document. But for every agenda packet, you know, for every meeting, there's an agenda packet. For every agenda packet, have that be one document, whether that's two pages or 200 pages. If you have already scanned some of these and would like to transfer them and they're in PDF, we can accept PDF. But if you haven't transferred yet and you are looking at beginning to scan these, you need to use TIFF rather than PDF. What we want to make sure of is that you're using a file format that does not sacrifice any detail to achieve a smaller file size. There are formats like JPEG, for example, that do that uh, quite, uh, quite considerably. They, they lead to a very small file size, but they sacrifice some detail that makes those records pretty pretty difficult to preserve. You end up with the photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy effect as that record is saved, resaved, migrated over time. So that's why we specify TIFF. Um, and we can't, like I said, we can work with PDF, but really we, we would like to only work with those if you've already made the scans before now. We can also accept these as born digital records. If say these are distributed to the members of a council or board commission as digital documents rather than as a paper stack. Uh, you could transfer those. We would just ask that you save the packet as a PDFA document. That's uh, PDFA is referred to sometimes as the archival PDF uh, format. And in terms of if you are scanning here with file compression, we ask that you either not compress the files or use what's called lossless compression. And here are some examples here on the screen. Um, file compression is well, it's what, what I was talking about earlier with, say, JPEG. JPEG uses a rather extreme form of file compression that sacrifices detail to yield a smaller fire, file size. But for preservation purposes, we want to have as good a copy as possible from the get-go and preserve that without losing any detail over time. So that was the scanning requirements. In terms of the indexing requirements, there are relatively few requirements. 
Um, you'll notice that these pretty much match up to the the uh, the fields that we have available for uh, transferring meeting minutes. So uh, in terms of acceptable formats for the indexing, we encourage you to use uh, comma separated values files, CSV files, but uh, Excel also works perfectly well, different versions of Excel, or a text file, a tab, uh, some sort of delimited text file, like pipe delimited, semicolon delimited, tab delimited, we can work with all of those. Um, but very often, and when the examples that we provide, the template that we provide is in Excel, you can always save from Excel to a CSV file or a TXT file if you want. There are a total of seven required fields, and you can add others if you want. Those will display with the record, but they will not be searchable. So if you add a field for, for subjects or something like that, for example, it won't necessarily uh, incorporate that in, in, in its searches. And as I mentioned, we offer sample uh, indexing templates and blank indexing templates in Excel, and those were included in the, uh, in the handouts that uh, were sent to you before the session today. These are those seven indexing fields that I'd mentioned. Uh, the first two, A and B there, are very often almost identical. Uh, in each case, you're talking about a unique reference identifier. And the rules for those um, are they can't have any spaces in them or periods uh, or special characters, though a dash or an underscore, that is OK. So you don't want something that has a dot in the middle of the name. Um, you, I would say if you're going to do that, use an underscore uh, instead. The image file name is very often going to be the same as that unique reference identifier, except uh, very often that will have the the dot at the end, not part of the uh, of the file name exactly, but as to delineate the file type afterward. Like, you know, you've got this minute from this particular date dot um, dot tif. So that that's a TIFF file of that particular set of minutes or that particular uh, that particular agenda packet. In terms of agency, that's going to be the same throughout whatever you're sending. So for example, if you're Grant County Fire District number three, that's what's going to be listed in the agency column for each, uh, for each of those images you're sending, for each agenda packet. And the, the fourth field, field D, is also going to be the same throughout. The Board of Commissioners, for example, the Board of Fire Commissioners for Grant County Fire District number three. E is really going to be the one besides the reference identifier that's going to that's likely to change with each record. Um, it's the document date, so you want to have the date of that particular meeting, and it does need to be in a format that's a little different from what you may be used to if you haven't transferred records to the digital archives before. That is four-digit year slash two-digit month slash two-digit date. Um, F and G are ones that you can, again, pretty much fill out the first line and then copy to all the other lines of your index. The document type in this case is just agenda packets, just as you would put minutes if those were minutes, ordinances if those were ordinances. In this case, it's going to say agenda packets. And then lastly, it says party type, and you all the only thing you need to put there in the first line and then copy it to the other lines of your index, the word entity. Here's an example of an indexing spreadsheet where, in this case, as I said before, you can transfer just a few agenda packets or sets of minutes or ordinances or resolutions, as, as few as you like. In this case, this was a sample send where we had five agenda packets. You can see from the dates, uh, from the date field, which is uh, about two-thirds of the way over on the right, that these were from let's see, October of 2016 up through uh, February of 2017. And identified here their agenda packets. And you see here that the reference identifier is different for each of these, and that the file name is the same, except it just has the .tif at the end. It is a good idea when naming these records to develop a naming standard. So in this case, you notice for Grant County Fire District 3, I've got the, that 
GCFD3, I've got that to indicate that. AP for, in this case, agenda packets. And then I've got the date in that format that uh, is reflected over in the document date field. You don't have to do it that way, but this is a way that if you look at that file later on, you will have an idea of what it is without even needing to open it. You can see, oh, Grant County Fire District 3, agenda packet from 10-12-2016. The transfer process in, in brief uh, relates to, really involve, involves two documents and, uh, and an online training. The first document is called the Transfer Information Plan. Sometimes it's called the Transfer Information Spreadsheet. So you may see it uh, abbreviated as the TIP or the TIS. That's a document that gives us the gives us at the archive the basic information we need, the general descriptive information to get an idea of what is about to come our way. So you complete that form and you get in touch with your branch archives or the records management staff. You get in touch with us and, and let us know what you've got. We'll take a look at your transfer information plan or spreadsheet and make sure that uh, we don't have any questions about it. If that looks good, then we will pass you along to the Electronic Records Archivist, uh, and that's that's Debbie Bond over at our uh, Eastern Region and Digital Archives facility in Cheney. She will fill out a form called a transmittal agreement. Now, that's the legal document. We'll look at that in just a couple of slides. It sets up the legal authority for you to transfer those records to the archives and for the archives point forward to preserve those and provide access to them in accordance with the laws of the state of Washington. So they'll send you the, she will send you the transmittal agreement filled out. What you need to do is have the appropriate uh, authority at your agency sign and return that. In terms of documentation that you need to create or sign, that sort of thing, that's pretty much it uh, besides your indexing document. When you've got your, your TIP, TIP and your TA signed, we will, put you in touch with another staff member at the Digital Archives, uh, Todd Henderson, who will provide you with training in the use of Archive This, which is our transfer tool. It kind of packages up the images and the data to transmit them to the archives. Uh, he will also give you training if needed in your kind of administrative access, your backdoor access to those records. And that uses a tool called a Web Admin. And he will provide that training to you. It will be over the phone and then also uh, using a tool where you can watch, uh, you know, similar to GoToMeeting, that sort of thing, where you can watch what's going on on his screen. So it will be kind of an, a, an active uh, training. In most cases, your transfer is going to be online using file transfer protocol, uh, FTP as long as it's fewer than 250 gigabytes total in terms of the volume of all those records. If it is greater than 250 gigabytes, we'll, we'll know that from looking at your transfer information plan. And what we would do is arrange to send you a secure portable hard drive. And you'd still be using the same tools to transfer. You'd still be using Archive This. But what you'd be doing is using Archive This to, instead of sending these records uh, to the digital archives, online through file transfer protocol, it would be sending those records, saving them to the hard drive, and then you'd be sending the hard drive back to us. And either way you do that, uh, you would be getting afterward a confirmation of transfer, and then also a transformation that the records have been successfully ingested. More on that in just a little bit. Here's a snapshot of the transfer information plan for this, this theoretical case for, say, Grant County Fire District 3. You see we're getting basic information of who's, what agency is performing the transfer, what's the record series, uh, the general date range, file format, want to get an idea of how many, how many or what's the total quantity, total volume of records. You see here, this is 148 megabytes, so that's one that can easily, very quickly be taken care of uh, in an online transfer. If there are records that you know we're out of the agency's custody for a long time, uh, you, could, you could let us know if the records were out, ever out of the agency's custody. We can just note that, just in case there's any question about their authenticity. In most cases, though, 99.8% or so of transfers, the answer on this is going to be no. To our knowledge, 
you know, to your agency's knowledge, that it was never out of their custody. Uh, in terms of statutory restrictions, if there is something that, uh, some statute that says those particular records are confidential or they have confidential content, we ask that you indicate here what that's, what the exemption is, what is the restriction uh, on access, and what's the statutory basis for it, the specific statute. Some agencies want to do a one-time transfer. Most often, though, with this one, you're going to specify that it's a recurring transfer. So it leaves the door open to, unless you've scanned everything up to the current date and don't plan to send anymore, you're going to want to put recurring here. And then are there statutory copy fees? In this case, with minutes, agenda packets, that sort of thing, the answer is going to be no. And then you've got just a brief dis uh, description here, and you can you can steal from this one if you if you like, if it's appropriate. What it uh, just a description of what it is includes scanned versions of original agenda packets from the Board of Fire Commissioners during meetings from this date through this date. That's that's all you need. Or you can do some sort of variation on that. Here's the transmittal agreement. Um, it again is is something that if you if you're adding new record series on over time, say if you've transferred minutes, but this is your first time transferring agenda packets, or it's your first time transferring resolutions or something, we will we can amend the transmittal agreement later on to add additional series, and we'll just get an updated signature from you on that. But uh, this is a document that Debbie Bond, the, the electronic records archivist, will fill out for you, and there will be the appropriate signature from our agency here, and then the appropriate authority at your agency will sign there. Now, I would mentioned the Archive This tool, so I want to give you some, some snapshots that kind of walk you through uh, how this is used. When you first download it, you will see uh, a box like this on your screen, and you'll, you'll click Run. Right now, it's configured to work through Internet Explorer. Uh, I believe that currently it may work through, uh, I want to say it works uh, I don't believe it works with Firefox necessarily, but I believe it does work with Chrome. One thing you do want to make sure of uh, with your IT person or your IT department, make sure that uh, you have .NET Framework 4.5. Um, if you do not have it, it will flag you to let you know that. And when it first loads uh, the program, you will see this screen with a picture of the Eastern Region branch and digital archives. And usually, the username and password at top here may be filled in, possibly be filled in already. If not, you'll be provided with the username and password separately as well. And you can type in your full name and what your email address is. And for future, if you want, you can click Remember Me and then log in. First thing the archive this is going to ask you is, what is your data format? So for your indexing information, what what is it that you have? It has a few different options, but when you're sending uh, these these types of records to us, the agenda packets, minutes, etc., you're just going to choose flat file because that accommodates Excel files, CSV, and those uh, delimited text files. Those would all be considered one type. And if these records are currently at your agency, you would click No here on the little button of Are your records from the holdings of the Washington State Archives? You may plan to transfer them to us, but at the time of the transfer, you'd be clicking no. And then hit next at bottom right. Then, once we've got the information about the indexing info, we want to find out what are you sending us. Uh, we ask three different, we have three different fields to talk about uh, what is being transferred and from whom, the records creator field, the custodial partner field, and the submitting partner field. I'll explain the differences between those in the next slide. Uh, but then we're looking at record series. And you will have one or more choices in the drop-down menu there on that fourth line where I just drew the arrow. Um, if it, depending on how many series you have set up in your transmittal agreement uh, to send to us. And whether you've sent records to us before. You can take a look here once you've selected that. Uh, it will have a start date and an end date plugged in. You can look at those and Make adjustments to those if what you're sending, say, extends the end date further out or something. This DAN will already be filled out. And these two fields, the introduction and the source of the records, 
sorry, my ovals are going a little wonky here. But uh, the introduction the source of the records, there is likely to be information in these fields. You can take a look at it and see if there's anything wrong. However, you do not need to type anything in those fields. If you noticed anything that was incorrect, uh, you could get in touch with the Digital Archive staff, with, uh, with Debbie or with Todd, and let them know. And then down here, I want to indicate that the data is archival. Uh, with these, actually, um, since they'll be available online, free for someone to look at or print, you could unclick this one that says records are orderable. I mentioned with those three different fields, they look like they might be the same answer in each case. Records creator, custodial partner, and submitting partner. That's not always going to be the same answer in each, depending on the history of your agency. Uh, the records creator is the entity, the body, that originally created the records being transferred. I sometimes use the example of, uh, say, with a school district or with an irrigation district. Those have consolidated or gone away over time. And so there may have been an irrigation district 7 for a particular county at one point, but maybe now that's part of irrigation district 8, and 7 has gone away. So the records creator in that case would be uh, for, for those years that there was an Irrigation District 7, that, that would be what you'd put there, whatever county, Irrigation District 7. The custodial partner, on the other hand, is the entity or body with legal custody of the records at the time that you're transferring them. So in that example that I just mentioned, with the old District 7 that's been incorporated into District 8, the custodial partner would be whatever county, District 8. And then the submitting partner is the entity or body that is transferring the records to the digital archives. If those are being transferred from your agency, chances are that's going to be the same as the custodial partner. But um, to give you an example, if we have digitized records that we have here from some agency and we're transmitting those, uh, the records creator and custodial partner will relate to what that agency was. But the submitting partner in that case would end up being the archives because we are the ones, in this case, feeding it into the digital archives. So you've identified in that first slide we saw that you've got a flat file for your, for your data about the images. And what this screen does is it asks you to, to hook us up with that information. So first you indicate what the metadata format is. So say, for example, you've, you've uh, created it as a comma separated values file. In that case, you click that in the drop down menu and, and that, uh, and that will plug that in. Looks like Jennifer has a question. Uh, Jennifer, please go ahead and type uh, at the bottom in the chat window. I'll be happy to answer that. In the meantime, I will move on to the next uh, slide while you're typing. Then we've identified what the data is, and we want to find out where is it. So on that same page, we'll ask you for the metadata path. and. Generally, it helps to use that browse function to identify where on your machine that is. And in this case, you're sending both indexes and images. So you would, cert you would indeed check the box that says the metadata references digital objects. And also, uh, in the examples that we give you, in the, in the uh, templates that we give you. The first row contains the name of the column, so you can leave it that way and then check this part that says first row contains the name of columns. Then we want to know what the digital object format is. Hopefully that's TIFF, but it may be PDF or PDFA based on what we talked about before. Here again, you're identifying now where are those files, so have them in a particular folder and identify where that folder is. And we just want to make sure this defaults to the records being displayable on the website. So as, as long as that's the case, then, then leave that as it is, and then again, click Next. Now this, this field is, uh, this page is probably the, the most complex of them, but if you get through this and you do this once, you won't have to do it again because you can set up a template for how you transfer in the future to make sure you'll be doing it the same way. This, on this page, you take the columns that are in your, in your template, in your indexing information, and you identify where, that's over here, and you identify where it's going to, what fields it's going to display under on the screen. 
So for example, a lot of them are fairly straightforward. That subject is going to display as uh, display as subject. Or a document type, in this case it would be agenda packets, will display in the document type field. And you can change the order over here if you want these to be in a different order, but this is the, the usual order that uh, the fields will display when someone searches for them. And then down below on the bottom half of the, of the screen there, it will show you what the, uh, what, it will take the information that's in the indexes and give you an idea of what that will look like. It will plug that information in so you can see that it's in the right place. As I said, you only need to do this once per title, once per record series that you're sending. So great, you can do it one time for agenda packets, then you can click the save box up here once you're done, type in for the template what, the, what that's going to be. You can say agenda packet template, and then click save, and you can, uh, you'll be able to use that. That will be available next time. You would just click load the next time you logged in to send more agenda packets and uh, you'd have that template available to you. Then click Next, and as I said, you can save it as a template. Once you've done that, what Archive This does, since you've told it where the, you've told it where the images are and where the indexing information is, it's gonna take those and examine them both just to make sure that every image has an index entry, every index entry has an affiliated image with it. And so it will say, preparing your records for transfer to the digital archives. Depending on how many you have, this can take a little while. But they'll have the progress bar there. And then when it's done, it will say, right below the progress bar, your records have been prepared for transfer to the digital archives. So you've got those ready there in queue, ready to, ready to ship out. Think of them as being, they're boxed up. Now, uh, Choose your data format. Oh, this is taking you back to once you've uh, once you hit next on that, that previous window. It takes you back to that first window. So you can you can package up more records to transfer to the digital archives if you want. Or down here it says you have data queued for transfer to the digital archives. Click here to transfer the data to us. And so if you're ready, if those agenda packets that you just set up are the only things you need to go, then click there and it will take you to the transfer data screen, which will list any other, the, that series that you just queued up to go and any other records that you've set up before to transfer if they haven't been transferred yet. And if you're ready to go with those, you'd be hitting, well, most of the time you'd be hitting upload to the digital archives. As I mentioned before, if if you've indicated that you have more than 250 gigabytes, you'd be clicking export to hard drive instead. And you'll click, uh, you can either select all up there at the top left, or you can just select those records that you want to transfer at this time that have been queued up. And then it will start uploading those document by document. So there's a progress bar at the bottom and it will tell you what what file it's uploading at that particular moment, that zips by pretty quickly. Um, but the overall process can take several minutes or, or longer, depending on, on how many records you have, what the total amount of memory used is. Then it creates a digital fingerprint file at the end as it's completing the process. That's basically so that if we ever had to go back and uh, with a particular record that had come into the digital archives and wanted to make sure that it was the same thing that had come, that it was originally transmitted to us, this digital fingerprint file creates a unique code for that, for those files that came in. And we could use that to go back and verify that indeed this was what we received. And then it says done. It gets rid of the, uh, of the records that were on the list there. And you could then at that point either queue more records, get more set up, or you can you can exit the archive this program. Shortly after you you send records like that, you will receive an email at the appropriate email address that you've set up uh, with us. You'll receive what's called an incoming data validation report that basically says it's the equivalent of we've if, if this were a physical package saying we have received your package. It's it's right inside our loading dock now. 
Um, it does not mean that the records are already up and available in the digital archives, but it says that's we're ready for that next step. And that's going to take place automatically. So this is just an FYI saying, yep, we got what you sent. Within a few days, you'll also receive a, uh, a second confirmation, what's called an ingested data report. And what that says is, effectively, is we've opened your box the, and ingested this data into the archives. The ingestion was successful. And attached to this email will be something called an archive archival records transfer form that says this is what we received on this particular date from you. And that is your agency's evidence that it successfully transferred these records to the responsibility of the archives. But I mentioned before, your first transfer or any of your subsequent transfers, the size, the amount of records that they contain, all that, that is completely up to you. This is kind of self-serve after this point, unless you want additional assistance. So whenever you're ready, you can scan, index, transfer more of these records. Some agencies will actually update after every meeting. Once the minutes have been finalized or once the packet has gone out, uh, just after the meeting, they may transfer those records. And that also gives them the ability to transfer the originals earlier earlier than they would normally uh, be able to. So you saw on, on those earlier uh, record series that we were looking at in the retention schedules where it said retain for five years, or six years, I'm sorry, and then uh, transfer to the archives for permanent retention. You could actually transfer those paper agenda packets earlier than that. Your agency would still want to keep at least its digital copy available for that six years, it would still have a responsibility to be able to access that, but uh, it could transfer that paper early if it likes. There's no need, as I said, to, identif uh, to notify us when you're transferring more records to us, but if you have any questions or if it's been a while since you've used Archive This, since the last time you used it, you're always welcome to contact us with questions. We can do a refresher training, that sort of thing. And if you have other archival designated electronic records beyond those that I've mentioned, uh, you can contact us at the Records Management Help Desk and we can work with you to identify what can be transferred, what the best way to transfer that is, uh, et cetera. Online access uh, for these records. Let's get a look at what this looks like on the receiving end or on the, on the user's end once the records have, have been ingested at the digital archives. With these particular records, unless there's been something you've uh, indicated is statutorily exempt from viewing, these records are searchable and viewable by public. And we do apply to these images. Uh, we, we apply optical character recognition, uh, or OCR, which effectively makes it like a readable, similar to a readable PDF, or a readable document. Um, it, it interprets the, the document looking for letters and words and numbers, that sort of thing. It's not 100% accurate, uh, and the cleaner the copy is, the cleaner the scan is, the better it does. Uh, original handwriting from, say, pre-1920, uh, uh, well, you're probably not likely to have agenda packets from that period, but if you do, they may very well be handwritten. OCR is not very useful for that, but it, it does offer you some means of access to most documents if they're typed and they're a reasonably clean copy. Uh, you can also do a detailed search um, by county, by title, uh, by date of the document. So if someone says, I want to see all the, uh, all the agenda packets available for Yakima County entities, uh, or, uh, local entities within Yakima County for the early 2000s, you can plug that in. Or you can browse within a title, have it just show you for this particular agency, here are all the agenda packets that are available. And users, when they find something that they want, they can view and print those images for free. Um, if they do need a certified copy that has an official certification saying this is what was transferred to the archives, that sort of thing, we do provide contact information for that agency uh, with the individual record result or contact information for the archives to, uh, to provide that. If your agency does find later on that it needs to correct metadata, if it needs to resend a particular, say it sent the wrong image for a particular uh, index field, uh, you, can, you can take care of that. 
through the web admin tool that I've mentioned before. Same thing with being able to access confidential records. Your agency with administrative privileges can access those confidential records, but no one else accessing the Digital Archive site can. So here's just a quick walkthrough of how you'd find these records. You look for here, record series. I click on that. And on the collections online on the left, you see there's a field for minutes and meeting records. So we actually have the minutes and the agenda packets in the same uh, in the same place, uh, you know, under under the same series here. So let's say, in this case, I've switched Grant County Fire Districts. I went from number three before to number 10 now. And you see it's got minutes, uh, 1958 to 2010. In this case, it didn't reference specifically in the field that it has agenda packets, but you'll see in a moment that it does include those. So say I want to type something in particular under as a search term and want to specify uh, a, a date here. Uh, I can do that here on the title info field, which also gives some basic information about, about the records. So I did a search in this case. You see I typed in the term water up under party, party name, party type, document number. And this has given me a list of all the, uh, of all the minutes and agenda packets that include the word, uh, the word water. So I look at this one and say, well, I think this one, uh, 4-11-2007, that's, that's what I want. So I click on that, and it provides information about that particular, uh, that particular document, the indexing information. And you see over here, it gives you two ways to view it, as a single multi-page uh, PDF type file, or you can view it as an image, uh, uh, on, on the website here. If this is something you're going to want to print out or save on your own machine or, uh, or you're directing someone to do it, I'd recommend probably taking the PDF route here. But either one of these will give you the same images just delivered in a different, <laughs> in a different package, as it were. So I clicked in this case on the PDF. And you see here, you've got the regular meeting agenda for the April 11th, 2007 meeting. And you see that, uh, let's see, it says pages page one of 10 up here toward the top, and uh, and then along the side, you can see uh, little, uh, you know, small images of uh, little thumbprints of the other pages that you can access. So that is our session for today, talking about the uh, transfer of agenda packets to the digital archives. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording in just a moment, but I'm, then I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. But uh, thanks very much, and uh, we're happy to let us know how we can help in uh, managing your records and transferring them appropriately. Thank you.